Bienvenue sur le circuit Paul Ricard. Welcome to the Paul Ricard circuit. It's back to business with the VDV series, even if there's still a holiday feel here with lovely blue skies and temperatures of 30 degrees plus. It will be hot under the driver's helmets and especially for those taking part in the Blue Ribbon event of the weekend, the 12 hours for the Protos. So away we go for the fifth VDV round of the 2015 season on Motors TV. The VDV is loyal to the Paul Ricard circuit. The track gives the drivers great sensations and that's what the promoters want, to give pleasure and frissons to people. The track inaugurated some 45 years ago already and Le Castellet has become a mainstay of French and European motorsport. The VDV then of course has set up home here once again. In the single seat is the reigning champion Roberto Casaniga once again suffered at Paul Ricard. In fact, he cracked completely going into a spin in the first race and abandoning all chance for a podium finish. In the other two races during the weekend, he did what he could, holding on to second place finishes. The wins all went to the championship leader and we'll talk about him in a second or two. Aside from the battle between the 2014 champion and the probable 2015 champion, others tried to keep their heads above water. Managing it this weekend and in style was Alexandre Joannem in this black and white car. Speed and consistency from the Frenchman with three races and three podiums. If you're a regular follower of the VDV series, you'll know the man who managed to dominate his opponents, David Drew. The Swiss is on another planet. He won the three races contested at Paul Ricard. The scenario always the same, pole position a perfect start and then the win with a very comfortable margin. And he'll probably, unless there's a major incident, wrap up the title very soon. David Drew is holding all the cars to do that and he can already think about the 2016 season. Among the five categories represented here, there are the historic cars in the VHC and we've chosen to interest ourselves in this car, the Ford GT40 of RARA Engineering. Alain Bazar, you'll be at the wheel of this one. How did you come across this car? It's a car I've been following for six years, more or less. It belonged to one of my clients and I had the opportunity to buy it two years ago. I race with this car and I know it very well. I know what it is capable of. And how do you have to drive it? Are there things you need to know? You have to tell yourself that it's an old car and you don't drive it the way you would a modern car. You have to drive carefully. The car is heavy and inert and very powerful, so you have to tread very carefully when it comes to accelerating. The Ford GT40 is a legendary car. Are you aware you're driving an out-of-the-ordinary car? Of course, a lot of people want to drive this car one day. I'm lucky enough to be able to do it. I enjoy every moment of it. I'm very aware of what a privilege it is, how lucky I am. Euh, oui, je, con, je suis vraiment très conscient de la chance que j'ai, ça c'est sûr. Votre team, Now, your team is based in Belgium. Why do you come to race so far from home? Oh, the VDV is a really nice championship. I think it's really suited to this sort of car. It's accessible and people aren't big headed here. Sans se prendre la tête. Et bon, c'est encore accessible. Fonio is a rapidly expanding discipline, and the more the season goes on, the stiffer the competition. Just like in single-seaters, the leader isn't allowing anyone to impress upon him. We'll interest ourselves in him in a second, but first, let's look at those who attempted to follow him. Julian Goupy, for example, in the number 45. Here at Paul Ricard, he climbed onto the podium twice. Julian realized very early that something was possible in the heat in the south of France. Consistent lap times, great speed, and careful driving. Goopy's recipe was a successful one. 
Cyril Denis arrived at Le Castellet in fourth place in the standings. In the previous round at Dijon, he caught the eye. Cyril has the capacity to seize on opportunities. In the crazy battle between the top 10 drivers, he always manages to come up with the goods. And in the three races this weekend, he always manages to finish second. Here's 2015's probable champion, Romain Rouillet. He doesn't drive, he flies. He won absolutely everything once again. In race number two, his rivals did cause him a few problems, but he emerged from the scrum victorious. Romain Houllier is the perfect representative of the Funio spirit, ultra relaxed in the paddock, often until the small hours, and then he's ultra competitive the following day on the track. Before getting to the heart of the subject of the GT category, let's go for a lap of the Paul Ricard circuit in the company of Thierry Perrier, one of the Ferrari Visium drivers. Ils sont leaders de la catégorie GT, They're the leaders of the GT category, Jean-Paul Pagny and Thierry Perrier. We're catching up with you here at the Paul Ricard circuit. Is it suited to your car, the F458 GT2? I told you at Dijon that the car was perfect for Dijon because it's a wide, quick circuit. But here, where you have to get going again very often, well, it's not a circuit for our car, not at all. As Thierry said, we have a car which is especially prepared for the VDV, so the basis of it is a GT2. But to accept the fuel we use here, we have a lower compression ratio. And that's a bit technical. And as a consequence, we have a lot less coupling. It means we're less dynamic when it comes to accelerating than the Porsches or the Mercedes. We're handicapped by that, and we try to compensate for it by working on the aerodynamics, as we did this morning. You said it's a car specially prepared for the VDV. Is that why we don't see you in ELMS or in Blancpain? It is. In ELMS, even if they're based on GT2s, the engine is not exactly a GT2. It's a little less powerful with a bit less coupling. And in Blancpain, they only accept GT3, so we can't enter with this car. We'd need another car. Gentlemen, good luck to you and have fun out there. We're going to follow your adventures and get straight into the highlights of the GT race. On pole, a newcomer, the Ginetta LMP3, driven by Mike Simpson and Lawrence Tomlinson, the president of the brand. Alongside them, the men we've just spoken to, Thierry Perrier will take the start and Jean-Bernard Bouvet will do the final sprint. In third place on the grid, the Italian trio of Mario Cordoni, Marco Zanutini and Andrea Montemini. 
In fourth, Paul Lafargue and Patrice Lafargue in their Porsche 911 GT3R prepared by IDEX Sport and Jean-Claude Rivier. Off the start, Thierry Perrier steals first place from the Ginetta. And then very quickly we see Paul Lafargue in first as he flies up from fourth to the leading position in a few seconds. This as seen from the Ferrari Visium, the moment he takes command of the race. One of the most surprising drivers at the start of the race is the BMW Z4 of Royal Motorsport, Luca Rangoni. In 10 minutes, he climbs four places and is now up to third. After 30 minutes of racing, one driver is creating a sensation. Calco Constantin in the Ginetta Speed Factory. Four places better than his starting position. After an hour of racing, things get strategic at Visium as they refuel and take on cold drinks. Thierry Perrier gets going again and he's already done the obligatory drive through Half the race has already elapsed and in the pits the big names come in to hand over to teammates, among them Lawrence Tomlinson, the Ginetta president. It's uh, very hot out there, so uh, I think air conditioning would be nice, but uh, we ran good pace because I, I ran the whole two hours on one set of tyres just to, just to save money, but <laughs> Michelin make a very good tyre and thank you very much for that. Not too bad to say. I have. Uh, I got a broken rib as well, so it was a hard, a hard stint. Among the form teams, the Swiss Porsche number 267 with Jean-Paul Van Berg, Remy Terai and Adrian Amstutz. They've always been in fifth or thereabouts. Jean-Paul Van Berg did the first stint. He had a lot of fun. Oui, beaucoup, beaucoup. Oh, a lot, a lot. It's very hot though. <laughs> it was a yeah, good a stint beau, with uh, interesting uh, weather uh, conditions, let's say. Did the car give you any cause for alarm because of the heat, we asked? Well, none at all. The car functions perfectly well and the tyres are quite good. They slide around a bit, of course, but we're holding on and putting in consistent laps, and that's good. Things are going all wrong at IDEC. Misfortune again falls on Patrice and Paul Lafargue. The problems accumulate and immobilise the car just at the moment when the victory was invisible. Paul Lafargue, qu'est-ce qu'elle a votre voiture uh, problème, de problème with the starter, we repartir, wanted to get going again after the driver change and we needed a push start to get going, so we were penalised for that. Now the lads are searching around uh, and we'll try to repair it. The team does get going again, but finishes down in a lowly 14th place. It's maybe the turning point in the championship, given that the Porsche number one has already had two abandonments this year. Their title rivals came through without major problems. Third place in the end for the Ferrari 51 of Montemini, Zanutini and Cordoni. In second, Visium building their championship lead. And the win to the Ginetta of LNT, driven by Simpson and Tomlinson. We've enjoyed it. It's been a tough race because it was very, very hot out there for the drivers. And uh, I know the Visium car had no air conditioning, so it was tough for those guys as well. Confirmation of that was Jean-Bernard Bouvet's first words on leaving the car. The air conditioning was broken all weekend long and without air con, it's more difficult. Andrea never let up with the pressure he put on us. I never relented either. In the last 50 minutes, it was really hard. It was hard, but it's a win for us, really, as the Ginetta was in a different race. Well done to them for winning it, because they deserved it, and I'm happy for them. Third place then goes to the Italian trio. Once again, they pushed the Ferrari 458 GT3 to 101% of its potential. We worked well and looked after the tyres. I think third place was the best we could have achieved. And the penultimate round in this category will take place at Manicourt in mid-October. Eric Trouillet, Yann Eric Trouillet, Trouillet Jordan, Jordan, Clary, Jordan, Jordan Perroy, Perroy. they're currently well positioned in the championship, but something tells me they'd like to have 18 points more. What have you been missing since the start of the season to be right at the top of the standings? 
We've been a bit unlucky and the team needs to improve. But it's true that since the start of the season we've been unlucky. There's always been something which has just held us back in the standings. Our luck will change, I'm sure of that. Jordan, this is a special race, one which will take place partly at night. Have you put in special preparations for that? Yes, I'm always preparing because every race is important. I've already raced at night with our sponsor, Georges Dominguez, who races with us in Protos. Just like at the 25 Hours Fun Cup where there's driving at night. So I'm used to it and prepared for it. We're all ready to take on the race of the year. Ligier nous a quitté il y a peu. Died recently, and you're racing in a Ligier. A special atmosphere this weekend, I imagine. Of course, for everybody and for me especially, because he gave me my chance a few years ago. There's pain in my heart. We know what we have to do to honor him, and we'll do everything we can in order to do that. And just before the race, all the drivers got together for a minute of silence and applause in the memory of Guy Ligier. The 12 hours of Paul Ricard dedicated to him. On pole position on the starting grid, the number eight of Villarino Ferte Iliano. Alongside them, the Govan Passiant Findlay trio. Third place for Acri, Paul Besançon and Fubert. In fourth, Tetanger, Jamin and Jules. An excellent start from Villarino, who makes the most of starting from pole. And a perfect start from the man following him, Jean Baptiste Lahaye, who picks up four positions in the opening seconds of the event. After an hour's racing, the 91, which started second, starts to fall down the standings after a technical problem. It ends up abandoning a quarter of the way through. The man of the opening stages of the race is undoubtedly Olivier Lombard. In the number number seven of Team TFT, he climbs nine spots in the space of 90 minutes. A very good start to his stint. Yeah, but the end of it was much tougher in terms of lap times, and I think the tyres suffered a lot because of the heat. The end of the stint was really difficult, and I had to look after the car. But we're up there near the top of the standings, and that was the objective. We're there. Among the main protagonists of the first three hours of racing, the number 17 team, the IDEX Sport car, spends a long time in the top three before things turn sour for the team. The car does get going again, although only manages to cross the line in 17th place. After exhaust problems, the 32, which was fourth in qualifying, has another lengthy pit stop. It's the water pump this time. The temperature of the water is climbing and we wanted to check what was going on. They're just doing the final checks before I can get back in the car. And the problems continue to pile up. Claire perrois Trier, who we spoke to earlier, are forced to throw in the towel within the opening third of the race. The cars have to come into the pits a certain number of times. That number varies depending on the composition of the teams and how experienced the drivers are. Some cars have to do 16 drive throughs and that's the maximum. At Ultimate, they only have to come in five times, and that gives them cause for optimism because they have the necessary level and they want to prove it. They stay in the top three for seven hours. I got into the right train straight away there with Villarino and Germain who was following me. The three of us built up a gap and we had a comfortable advantage. After that, we didn't want to take any risks with fuel and I think we stopped a little earlier than the other teams. That's why the standings are moving around a fair bit in the leading positions. What are the other cars who spent time in the lead? The pole sitters, the Norma of Ferte Iliano Villarino, the CD Sport number 30 of the championship leaders, Bold, Besançon, Foubert and Acquery. And the comeback kids, Zolanger, Mondolo and Valio Gior, who reminded everybody they're still very quick. We have pace, that's one thing, but in these long races you need reliability too. Two or three of our friendly rivals have suffered problems. I think that happens and it could happen to anybody at any time. Everybody needs to work well in the pits and with the preparation and things need to hold together. As night falls on the Paul Ricard circuit, the list of teams suffering grows. Another leading car is about to abandon. The number eight, the pole sitter driven by, among others, Alain Ferté. 
C'est le potentiomètre de sélection de vitesse qui est cassé. C'est ce que nous avons besoin de sélectionner le gear qui est cassé. Nous étions dans 6 gears et ce n'est pas facile de conduire un full lap dans 6. Ander a eu un scare et il a arrêté. Il a été réparé. 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 Nous devons changer la pièce. Et c'est quelque chose qui est dans un endroit qui est difficile de réparer. Derrière la boîte, au milieu, donc c'est un endroit assez difficile à accéder. And that's not all. Something incredible happens as another leading contender, the Valiant number 35, is also forced to give up with mechanical trouble. The ultimate team will be back out to fight at Manicourt. The CD Sport number 30, another top car, disappears from the standings after a fire. Very bad news for Akari, Bol Besançon and Foubert. Three hours from the end, while the atmosphere is building at the back of the paddock, teams managing to ally speed and luck emerge at the top of the timesheets. The 41 of Natasha Gashnon, Jens Pettersen and Marc Fagionato. Poirier Roussel and De Forno in the 19. The Norma 21 of Delafosse, Bersora and Montclair. And the 33, driven by Maulini, Wolf and Danilou. It's true that the way we started, well, it didn't look like we'd win. We're up there now, unfortunately, because of the problems the leading cars have endured here, and we'd like to hold position until the end. And they did manage that. The big winners are Marc Antoine Danilou, Nicola Maulini, and Jack Wolf. It does us good. We won at Mugello, then we had a lot of problems throughout the season, especially after Mugello when we were championship leaders. We then dropped to sixth in the standings. It's good to taste victory again. Second goes to Philippe Mondolo, David Zolanger and Christian Valliojour. What a comeback for this very friendly trio. Yes, it's the comeback and I hope that it's the start of another run for us. We haven't got the top step on the podium here, but second place is almost worth a win to us. In third, Natasha Gashnon, Jens Petersen and Marc Fagionato. I think we were five or six seconds behind second place, so it wasn't decided by much. This was a 12-hour race, and at the end of the day, it was only a few seconds that made the difference. And La Marseillaise concludes the longest race of the VDV season. Retour en plein jour pour vous dire Back to full revoir. daylight now to tell you that the next date in the VDV calendar is the second weekend of October at Manicourt. Until then, it's au revoir. Until then, it's au revoir.